There are six main trigonometric functions, and in this video we're going to take a look at how to take the derivatives of all six. The six main trig functions are sine of x, cosine of x, tangent of x, cosecant of x, secant of x, and cotangent of x. And we're going to go through these one at a time. The first few we're going to go uh, extra slow on just to kind of explain the process of how to take a derivative of one of these guys or where the derivative comes from, and then we'll speed up as we go along. So starting with our first function, sine x, uh, I've drawn here a graph of sine, and I just want to look real quickly at what the slopes would be uh, of sine x at given x values. So for instance, when x equals 0, this kind of looks like a slope of 1, and in fact it is 1. So along with each of these slopes, I'm going to plot each of these slopes as a y value. My goal is to try to graph the derivative and then see if I can recognize who that is. So at 0, I have a slope of 1, so I'm going to put a dot right up here at 1. At pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, but right here it looks like the slope is 0. It's got a horizontal tangent line. So I'll plot a y value of 0 there. Uh, here at pi, sine of pi is 0 again, but the slope is negative 1. So I'll plot the y value at negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, we have a slope of 0 again. And then at pi, uh, 2 pi, we're back to having a slope of 1 again. So if I play connect the dots, it'll look something like this. It'll look very similar to the sine curve only there's a, a slight delay. And if we look at this orange curve here, we should actually recognize who that is. This is the graph of cosine x, just, just looking at the orange graph there. And so that reveals to us or shows to us that the derivative for the sine function is the cosine function. Right? In a similar way, we can take the derivative of cosine x. I'll do this one a little quicker. So at 0, we have a slope of 0. At pi over 2, we have a slope of negative 1. At pi, we have a slope of 0 again. At 3 pi over 2, we have a slope of positive 1, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if I play connect the dots again and follow that pattern, I get a function that looks somewhat similar to cosine, but it's been shifted. And unfortunately, it's not the sine curve. The sine curve uh, goes in the other direction. Now, it looks something like the sine curve, except the sine curve has been reflected across the x-axis. So here's the x-axis. You see this y value was up here for the sine curve. This y value was down at negative 1 for the sine curve. So to reflect it over the x-axis will just negate all the y values. So that leads to the derivative of cosine x is negative sine of x. Now that's key, having the derivatives for sine and cosine done, because if I, if I go back up here to the original six trig functions, all six of these can be written in terms of sine and cosine. For instance, the, uh, the tangent function, as we well know, is sine x over cosine x. So I could differentiate tangent by using like the quotient rule, for instance, because I have a fraction here with sine over cosine. Cosecant is defined as 1 over sine x. Secant is defined as 1 over cosine x. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, which makes it cosine x over sine x. So being that I can write all six in terms of sine and cosine, and I know the derivatives of sine and cosine, that'll allow me to find the rest of the derivatives. Now I'll go through the full process with tangent, and then I'll just give you the last three. So if we wanted to differentiate tangent, we would actually consider tangent as sine x over cosine x. So the derivative of tangent will be quotient rule, low d high, low is cosine d high, I'm using the quotient rule here, is uh, this cosine x less high d low, so the numerator is sine x, the d low, the derivative of the denominator, is negative sine x. So I'll take that extra negative and turn this minus into a plus. 
over the denominator squared. So that's just an application of the quotient rule. If you're not familiar with what I did right here, you can refer to the video on the quotient rule, and this example will make a lot more sense. All right, so we get cosine squared x plus sine squared x divided by cosine squared x. Now this numerator right here, something should jump out to, at you when you look at that numerator there, sine squared plus cosine squared. In pre-cal, you learned a trig identity for that. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So this would reduce to 1 over cosine squared x. Now, I could write that as the derivative for tangent, but there's even a cleaner way to say that. 1 over cosine is defined as secant. So the derivative for tangent would be secant squared x. So now we have three derivatives. We've done sine x, cosine x, and tangent x. Now in a similar way, I would encourage you to take the derivatives for cosecant, secant, and cotangent just either using the quotient rule or the chain rule or uh, whatever applicable rule you need because we have the derivatives for sine and cosine. Now you might need some trig identities along the way, but they're all three something we could do. So let me run through these real quickly here. The derivative for secant, if you did all the algebra, which I'm going to forego, you would get secant x tangent x. The derivative for cosecant is negative cosecant x times cotangent of x. And the derivative for cotangent is negative cosecant squared x. So again, it's going to take a little algebra. It's going to take some time to, to derive these. But I would encourage you, after you've done all six, to make, make up some note cards, make up some flashcards or something, and just kind of go through them one at a time. There's, there's not a, a lot of things we have to memorize in Calc 1. I feel like we had more things to memorize in pre-calculus with the unit circle and the trig identities and all that sort of stuff. But in Calculus 1, this is definitely something that we have to commit to memory, these six trigonometric functions uh, and their derivatives. And we also have to be able to evaluate them at certain radian angles. So uh, it's worth some time to go back and brush up on the unit circle. And uh, again, just make sure to have these derivatives memorized.